Hello everyone, and welcome back to the final episode in our Starcrossed series. Yeah, thank you so much to everybody out there that's uh, listening to this series and uh, everybody else that has checked out our previous series. We're so happy to have you back. We hope that you are enjoying listening to the episodes as much as we enjoyed recording them. If you guys have not backed the Kickstarter yet, there is still time as you are listening to this. Um, There are about 10 days left on the Kickstarter as we release this episode. So I really, really encourage you to check out this game if we have piqued your interest at all or if you want to just support a really awesome creator. Yeah, no, Alex is uh, working hard towards some uh, amazing stretch goals uh, on the Kickstarter. And a quick reminder to everybody, uh, we will not be releasing an episode next week. Uh, We're actually going to be taking a week off after each series to give us a little bit more time to catch up on editing the previous recordings and to uh, just give ourselves a little bit of a break. Um, But the next episode will be airing on Monday, May 14th, when we start Series 4 which is going to be Legend of the Five Rains, 4th edition, with our guest Tanner from the Shadow of the Cabal podcast. We are really, really excited about that series of episodes. There's some some really good stuff in there. Um, So hopefully you guys will stick around for that one as well. We also want to take a minute to read another review. Um, You guys have been really awesome about leaving just fantastic reviews for us. many of which have made me cry. Um, So I want to take a minute to read one of them. This one is from our friend Rich Howard. And uh, the subject is way more than the title suggests. I thought character creation cast was going to be a fun jaunt into creating interesting characters, but they deliver so much more. Insights into player and GM gameplay approaches, discussions on game development theory, RPG history, comparative system breakdowns, free PDFs for every created character, and even dice to PC pairings. And yes, I also got a fun jaunt into creating characters. Creation Cast is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rich. That's Thank you so much, Rich. We love oh, you. <laughs> we love you so much, man. <laughs> oh, seriously. Um, but yeah, if you are enjoying this podcast, please, please, please leave a review. Uh, we will get to all of them, uh, in time. And with all of that out of the way, we won't let you wait any longer. Let's get back to the show with Alex Roberts. Welcome back to our discussion episode. I'm your host, Amelia. Last time we created some hesitant lovers with a brand new game called Starcrossed. This episode, we are going to discuss the character creation process. Ryan and I are very excited to welcome back Alex Roberts, host of the Backstory Podcast on the One Shot Podcast Network and creator of this very game, which you can back on Kickstarter now. Alex, do you want to go ahead and reintroduce yourself to everyone and um, tell us about the couple that you and I made? (laughs) Uh, Thank you. Yeah, my name is Alex Roberts. I'm a game designer, writer, critic, uh, and I do some secret background work in the games industry as well. And the couple that you and I made, gosh, sexy spies. Is there anything better? Um, no, you were KGB. <laughs> I was MI6. I was just completely and utterly devoted to queen and country. Uh, you were utterly terrified of the punishment of their, your brutal dictatorship under which you lived. Oh, it was so forbidden. It was so delicious. Um, yeah, it was great. And Amelia, do you want to talk about the couple that both you and I made? 
Um, yes, you and I made some really adorable um, magic school students who are rivals for um, a seat at the top of the class. And they can't be together because they are just a little bit too engrossed in their work. And um, I viewed it as education being the most important thing and nothing could get in the way of that. Um, and you had a little bit of uh, self-doubt, I think, mm -hmm. about um, being good enough to compete with me, even though you were always in close competition. <laughs> All right. And then Ryan, do you want to talk about the couple that you and Alex made? Oh, most definitely. Um, <laughs> yes. All day. <laughs> Alex and I made a magical girl duo. Uh, Sailor Xena was Alex's character, and Sailor Gabriel was my character. And we played uh, basically uh, Sailor Scouts, I guess you could say. We're trying to defend the world from darkness, and Sailor Xena uh, has like a miracle romance going on with an unknown prince. And if we were to go against that sort of destiny, the world might fall into darkness and it would pretty much doom everybody that we know, including each other. I love the wide variation in like stakes for all of yeah. these. But, like some of them are like, I might not be top of my class and my college application would be like a little <laughs> sketchy. And some of them are like, no, the whole world is doomed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I am so glad we did multiple uh, setups. It really, really yeah, me it too. shows off really nicely the um, the wild stuff that can happen when people get a hold of this game. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, we came up with like some very, like vastly different scenarios. I mean, and partly because we were trying to change it up a yeah, little bit, yeah. but like, and they're really good. You guys, I'm so excited about these. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now that we know where we left off from last episode, let's go ahead and dive right into a segment we are calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. All right. In this segment, we want to talk to our guests uh, about their thoughts on character creation, uh, about the process and how it feels in this system uh, compared to others. And first, we'd like to start with a little bit more of a personal question for you, Alex. How did you get into role-playing games in the first place? So there are many answers to this question. I think if, if I go back like as far as I can, I feel like I've always been like LARPing, you know? I, I do a lot of LARPing actually. We, we don't talk about much on this cast, but um, I feel- But I want to at some point. <laughs> <laughs> we will get into that at some point. Um, I feel like I've always been doing like role playing or something. And I think I was, um, I was probably just a really bossy kid, but I feel like I was always the GM when we were playing pretend as kids. <laughs> and I really feel like um, uh, we, like me and, and my friends, absorbed the concept, like the cultural concept of D and D, before we actually had like access to the system in any way. So we would just like sit in the treehouse and be like, "Yeah, we're playing D and D," which means that I say what's happening, and other people p pretend that they're a different person and they respond to what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've always just been kind of like freeform role playing. Um, but when I was in high school, I was really delighted to meet other people who like had the actual books and everything. So then I was like, oh, it's time to play real D&D. &D. Um, so I, I had some very sweet friends who, you know, we would hang out in the basement and, and play 3.5. Good stuff. Um, nice. and actually, ironically for this show, I feel like we would always get super into character creation. We'd spend hours on that. And then by the time it came to like actually play the game, we would just be really tired and it would be 3 a.m. and um, there's not <laughs> enough energy drinks in the world. And so we would like barely actually ever play. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I feel like we are those kind of people. Like that's, I, <laughs> right? that's, that's why we have this show so that we don't have to like feel bad about not playing yeah. the games. <laughs> <laughs> there's an excuse. We just get to just play the good part. Um, yeah. Which is fine because I'm, I'm sure I just would have been personally disappointed 3.5 is a very cool system uh but i think i would have been personally disappointed by it and indeed when i got to university and fourth ed came out i tried playing a couple of times i was like yeah you know i i really want to like rpgs so i'm gonna play D D, 
you know, I, I uh, knew people who were running it and who wanted to play. And I was just, I found myself really disappointed by, by what I could do and couldn't do. I guess because I'm, I'm just personally not really into ca- tactical combat, um, which was a huge focus of, of that game, and it did it really well. So I played that a couple of times, and I decided, oh, well, not my thing. And, uh, I, and then one day I went out for a beer with my, my good buddy Patrick, uh, and he said, uh, he, I knew that he was really into role-playing games, and somehow it came up. And... I said, you know, Patrick, I, uh, I've been playing d and I, pl- I played the new one and everything, and I guess it turns out I just don't like role-playing games. I thought that I did, but I guess I don't. And he was like, let me tell you about these other systems that exist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure as soon as he described Burning Wheel to me, I was like, my my jaw was hitting the table and like my eyes were wide as saucers and I was just like, what is this world? What are you describing to me? Tell me everything. So uh, he actually started this group that was kind of like a book club for indie games. And so almost every month we would get together and I, I played all the classics of that era. You know, um, we played Fiasco and Dread and My Life with Master. Uh, I GM'd Kagamatsu. I, I actually GM'd My Life with Master, which I was totally unprepared for, but I just was so in love with it. <laughs> Um, I jammed Kagamatsu, which I would still do at the drop of a hat, uh, with very little provocation. Um, so yeah, I, I played a lot of the games that, um, that, yeah, actually inspired this game that I'm working on now. So that was amazing. And then, yeah, and then it kind of became my whole life and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we what's funny so is much. he actually, uh, he works for Burning Wheel now. He, he does copy editing and stuff for them. So <laughs> Oh, cool. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't give up. I'm glad you, you gave it another go because it was, if nothing else, for the, you know, two hours that we had before, it's <laughs> totally worth it, mm-hmm. as far as I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask a little bit about your personal process when you make characters for all of these games, um, not necessarily just for this game, but do you have a way that you usually go about it? Do you try and change it up um and do things a little bit differently every time um how do you decide what kind of character you want to play and and who you want to be um i really uh part of it depends on the system and how it plays out right so if i'm at the table with a bunch of other people and we're all creating characters at the same time then you want to create a character that's going to interact with people in an interesting way right so you want to start with relationships right so you want to start with like oh i'll be that character's uh, brother, yeah, that would be really cool because of this thing that's, that maybe might happen. Or you want to say like, oh, if you're playing this really, um, you know, cranky, upright, uptight paladin, I'm going to be this uh, bard who's really like playful and kind of, uh, you know, pokes fun at him a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be fun. So if if it's happening that way, then I kind of want to like explore relationships and, and start from there. Um, but if it's happening in a slightly more private way, or if, uh, if you're kind of just like making a character, which actually happens in a lot of the LARPs that I play, where you're kind of just like answering some questions about yourself, and then we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. I think I really, really like taking elements from people that I know. So like, um, I'll like take inspiration from people that I know in real life and be like, I want to play like that person. I want to pretend <laughs> that I have some aspect of that person's per- personality. And I think this is especially fun to do in LARP because you can kind of like embody them a little bit. So like, you know, I know this person at work who just has this like obscene confidence and they just walk around with their shoulders like this. And what if I walked around like that for a couple of hours? What would that feel like? Um, So that's one thing that I like to do. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I think there's because there's always lots of interesting ways to to approach that Mm. it's because some people say like oh this is a mechanical thing that i want to be able to do or i like this type of character or some people sit down and say like this is the kind of story that i want to tell so um you can kind of sort of steer things from there but i I like yours of like picking a personality trait (laughs) and kind of building out from there like that's really cool like a good place to start with like just that seed of (laughs) an idea (laughs) so how do you think you would compare the process of character creation in this game, in StarCrossed, uh, to other games that uh, you've played? Uh, 
And I think we could probably open that to all of us. Yeah, I, w- I would actually really like um, appreciate your two perspectives on it. Um, would you say that it's shorter? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I I think uh, I I like I like character creation to tell me what the game is about. Um, and I think in Starcross, that's something I really, really focused on is I didn't want to have anything on the character sheet that wasn't super important to the theme of the game, right? So the game is about people who are into each other who can't act on it. And so the only things that are on this sheet are, why are you so into each other and why can't you act on it? Mm -hmm. And those are the key things about you. And I want those things to be written down and in front of your face, right in front of you on the table, um, because I want you to always be thinking about them as you're playing, right? And let that be the focus of your play. Um, you'll notice that this, char- this character sheet doesn't have things like name, age, gender, <laughs> because those things will come up. You'll figure it out. But mm-hmm. it's, it's not the focus of the game. It's not what the game is about. If, the, if that becomes relevant at some point, then you'll figure it out on the fly. But knowing it in advance, nah. You just need to know why mm-hmm. are they so into you, and <laughs> uh, and yeah, why can't it be? I, I like the the kind of puzzle aspect of it, where you're not really sure um, exactly how all the pieces are gonna fit together until you start playing through the game, mm-hmm. and how you can actually create. Uh, more aspects of your personality through play instead of everything being up front this is everything that my character believes in yeah uh absolutely and i think that sometimes people underestimate their ability to fill in the blanks people are so creative and i I think people just can't help but fill in the blanks right everything Mm -hmm. we perceive we are adding additional information to make it make sense to us that's mm-hmm. just like, that's like how perception works. That's how we figure things out. Um, right. I mean, if we see a spill, like a, if we see an overturned cup on the floor and it's right next to a table, we're going to assume that the cup fell off the table, even if we didn't see it happen. And so I think even when you have this really, really bare bones of information, uh, people just, they make it make sense. And, and they do that through conversation and also in their own heads. Mm-hmm. And I, I like the idea that there's so much that you just have to play out. Um, I mean, that's, it's something that it comes up a lot in, um, in like actual play podcasting in particular, where it's, you say like, if the audience doesn't hear it, it didn't happen. (laughs) Um, And I think that that's a cool concept that you can bring into other games at home. Mm -hmm. And I I think in particular here, because there is a lot left blank um, that you can say, None of this is real until we've seen it happen. <laughs> and I, I like that, like, those, you are left to fill in those blanks because otherwise mm-hmm. it's not a full, you don't have the full picture, but, like, the whole goal of this game is to find out what that picture is. Yeah, exactly. And that's the fun of it, right? The fun is figuring it out. Um, mm-hmm. If you figured it out before you even played, then it's like, oh, you're robbing yourself of all this cool fun. And right. also, honestly, I am, like, really impatient and my attention span is just not that long and uh, i always (laughs) just find myself being like when when do we start when do we start when do we start uh so i like to just kind of put people in play as fast as possible Mm -hmm. yeah and it's really interesting when you are you you have kind of from this very bare bones set of questions an idea of who you're going to be playing as through this game and you're going to have a more personal connection to the character, I think, mm-hmm. through this sort of process, because you have to fill in a lot of blanks with both your own personality and um, a thought process of who is this character before you even start playing, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your mind is already going. You're already yeah. kind of like, your wheels are already spinning when you uh, mm-hmm. when you start going. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I think because of all of the the stuff that's left open, you're forced to sort of live in the moment. Yes. Which I, I think you can... 
There are a lot of games where because so much stuff is mechanical or so much stuff is written out in front of you on your character sheet that it kind of pulls you back out a little bit and you lose some of that immersion. And I, I think this is probably, um, you probably owe some of this to your background in doing a lot of LARP <laughs> and stuff like that. But like the immersive nature of this is that like you, there's so much that's left open so that while you're doing it, you have to be present because you can't just like look back at your sheet and say, oh yeah, like what was that about? What did I say? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's you have to, you have to be there for this. Right. Exactly. Thank you so much for identifying the LARP connection because uh, <laughs> there is so much um, like of the kinds of LARPs that I do in, I think particularly in this character sheet, because I'm used to playing games where your character sheet is maybe like two cards you know, that, that say two different things or like two sentences that you wrote down and, and you just put them in your pocket. Uh, I mean, some LARPs have incredibly elaborate uh, character information and backgrounds and you're cast in advance and you read, you know, 20 pages of information. Um, there, there's totally kinds of LARPs that are like that. But I think in, uh, in the traditions that I'm familiar with and a lot of the, the free form or scenario LARP or whatever you want to call it uh, style, you're often given a really small amount of information and you jump into it right away. And uh, mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> and I tried to bring that here and see if it would work in a tabletop environment. And I feel like it plays well off of the the relationship centered aspect of this, though, that like so much of like who you are in a relationship is is informed by the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. Like even if you are, you know, a confident um person who you know, like you have your own strong personality, there are still things about yourself that are determined by the people around you mm -hmm. and so I, th I think that leaving some of that open and having it be determined in play is really important because you are you are affected mm -hmm. by that in a relationship right yeah totally mm -hmm. i'm just also really excited about this game <laughs> it's so good i just this is like the best discussion show ever because you're just <laughs> saying really nice things about my game and i just get to be like yeah yeah it does yeah, yeah it is I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that on our, our google form and be like hey do you want to come on our show and listen to us say really nice things about you like that's a good pitch that's an easy sell that's my like, friend yeah. <laughs> let us play your game and then we will tell you how great you are <laughs> um okay now i lost my spot because i was laughing too hard that's okay i i think the next question is about um specific things i want to make sure that i did with character creation i feel like we've been talking about that yeah, I mean, I, I, we've we've talked about some of the the specifics of things that you wanted to bring in, but like outside of the ones that we've talked about, have there been other things that you were like, no, this has to make it into the game, um, or like a thing that you you sort of had to work around because you were so sure that like it needed to be there? Uh, I think um, I think making it as minimal as possible was actually something that was like a really important goal of mine, uh, and to cut away things that weren't important. Uh, like even to have that first question, the who am I, was kind of like a concession that I made to myself. Like, okay, players really seem to want something that they can put that is like their role, you know, uh, so that they can mm -hmm. be like, wait, am I the alien parasite or am <laughs> I the human host? I forget. So I can be like, okay, okay well, you can write it at the top. And yeah, so I, I think it, it really is about that, like only the important bits, only the most essential stuff. I don't know. I'm always fascinated by um, the, the sort of information that's on a character sheet and how that um, kind of tells you a little bit about like what you're supposed to do in the game. That You can get a good idea of what this game is about by looking at the character sheet. Yes. And I feel like because you've broken that down into these questions of like, why, why are we together? Why can't we, you know, why can't we act on this? And like, that's, mm -hmm. that is the whole game. And you've put it like right there on the. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You've hit on something really important, which is uh, not everybody wants to play a romance game. Mm -hmm. And I get that because I don't really like, um, I don't really like playing games where there's like a lot of killing. Mm -hmm. Like if there's some killing, it's mm -hmm. okay, but not if there's like a lot. <laughs> uh, and it's super important to me to be able to just look at a character sheet. And if I see like, strength weapons like if i see this huge list that's just like things that you have that make it easier to kill people i can be like wow cool what an interesting game that i am probably not going to have a lot of interest in um and that i probably won't enjoy uh so i i want someone to be able to look at this sheet and either be extremely jazzed or to say 
yep, not for me, because it it's going to have the words attractive on it. Uh, and mm-hmm. why, and it's going to have the word feelings on it. I mean, <laughs> like for some, for some people, that's just like a big magnet, uh, you know, that, that, that says, yes, let's play. I, this is my game. I want to play it. Mm-hmm. And for other people, it's, it's a nice little, like kind of not, not a big red warning sign, but like a nice little orange one, you know, that just <laughs> says like yeah. feelings, just a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean everybody's into different things and everybody like just like in relationships, like you've you've got your things mm-hmm. that you're you know that you are interested in that you want and that's totally fine. Not everything is for everyone yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um and but I I like that it's it's you can see that pretty clearly. Like here's here's what we're about, here's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> um I I want to ask in that same vein, did you find yourself having to add more questions because you wanted it to be really minimal or did you kind of put a bunch of stuff down and then kind of take away as you went along as you saw what wasn't important how did that process go you know what um it's i'm actually kind of glad that it came up uh in uh, the first couple that we made that i had an older version of the character sheet in front of me that had two separate questions what has brought us together and what is keeping us apart before it gets into why is that important to me being able to synthesize that into a single question of why can't I act on my feelings was like, Mwah, mm, chef kiss. <laughs> I was so happy when I was able to do that. Um, this is why you draft, folks. This is why drafts are a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you do not have to get it right the first time or even the seventh time. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of seems like we, we answered probably the next two questions. Uh, how... The process of character creation sets a player's expectations for playing Starcrossed, um, and how it adds to the immersion of playing the game. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like you you did a pretty good job of um, putting all of that together in like in a question. <laughs> like you know, it's, it's amazing. I feel like the complex people that we came up with with like four questions, yeah. four or five <laughs> questions. Like, I'm baffled at how we did that after, you know, having recorded episodes of, you know, other other games where, you know, it's like we had to answer. I mean, L5R we did. And it's um, that one has after you finish your creating your character, 20 questions that you then answer about your character. And I like that process. <laughs> yeah, that, but it's that can be crazy really to me, like how different this is that like you have four questions <laughs> and we still came up with people mm-hmm. like <laughs> there was still a person at the end yeah. that's wild right yeah yeah and we don't need to and, know their uh, int scores or their strength scores or <laughs> <laughs> yeah or their whole family exactly. history like that's all okay yeah because well and it's all about like what is important right like mm-hmm. what is important in this game um if this was a game where you then sent these two characters into combat i would have designed a very very poor character creation system because you'd be like i don't know what i'm good at i don't know what i bring to the combat (laughs) table necessarily uh yeah but it's it's you know the right characters for the game (laughs) i want to as far as immersion goes Mm -hmm. the one thing that i feel like outside of just answering questions and kind of building the world um the thing that i think was most immersive for me was the point where we trade sheets yes back and forth because like there's a level of yeah i talked about it before like agency that you are giving mm-hmm. up to this other person to say tell me yep. these things about myself and or that you tell me how you view yep. me and trust um, mm-hmm. but that is an integral part of any relationship is giving up some of that agency to somebody mm-hmm. else and trusting the other person and that's like to be kind of thrown into that in creating a character too was really cool to me Yeah, basically saying to the other person i trust you to to do something with what i'm giving you that's going to be amazing for me to use while we play this game and that's kind of a yeah a really big part of relationships is having that trust and th- this is kind of um i don't know if it's intentionally doing this um, kind of getting you, getting is. you into that sort of mindset, um, just from the act of I'm I'm trusting you with this, and you're trusting me with the same thing, and then we are going to, you know, have that sort of bond together before we even start playing. 
Yeah, it's an out of character exercise that really like informs the things that you are about to do in character. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That that's a really eloquent way of putting it, both of you. And I think uh, you know, the, I, I think maybe I underestimated the um, that that moment of vulnerability when you hand your sheet over to someone else and you think like, oh, I hope something good comes back. And also, uh, Amelia, I, I love that the moment when you were like, I'm not too sure about this, the way that you articulated it was like, I, I don't want to say something about them that they won't like, you know, or I don't want to give them something that they can't play with. And so, I mean, the whole game, you're going to be tossing stuff back and forth and trusting each other uh, and building on what, what each other sa say. Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe it is this sort of like, first first toe in in the water of yeah uh of trusting the other person to come up with something great and to trust yourself that hey if i say something that they don't like and they don't want that they're gonna tell me right because this game really relies on that Th this game relies on you being it's honest first about what you moment want. of vulnerability <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah and normally this is where we discuss like the group's cohesion uh whether it'll play well uh, in the system that we're playing, but this is a, a lot different of a game compared to most. Um, so I want to ask, you know, setting aside a person's uh, nondescript branded uh, block building tower set skills, <laughs> um, how do we think that these different scenarios might actually play out uh, in a broad sense? Hmm. We get to spend a few minutes um, thinking about our fan fiction. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Um, oh, my gosh. It's, it's really hard to know. It's really hard to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think the wizard school scenario would play out? How do you hope? Hmm. I know it's hard because like the whole premise of it is it doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Like, or no, is it like well, if the tower gets knocked over? So that's the thing. So like, if you topple the tower... You act on each other's, you, you act on your feelings. And, and it's who topples the tower is who acts, right? Yeah, whoever whoever touched it last. Yeah. Um, they act on their feelings. So they do something that makes their feelings known. So that could be verbal, mm -hmm. right? They just, they suddenly just kind of blurt it out. Or it could be uh, just anything that makes it obvious. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's sometimes very subtle, right? It's, um, it, it's very specific to the context. I I want to say for the wizard scenario, um, and let me know if this is uh, if this is good for you, Amelia. Um, at mm -hmm. some point, we get in an absolutely heated argument, like really top voice yelling at each other, and then it just gets blurted out by the person that knocked the tower over. Oh my gosh, that's so good. That'd be such a good scene. <laughs> I love scene. that so That'd be much. such a good scene. Of like, we're having this whole fight of like, everything is terrible and I can't believe you did this and why would you, mm -hmm. you know, like, and then it's just like, because I really like yeah, exactly. you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did it because I wanted to spend more time with you, okay? <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. I heart those two so much. Oh, this is like, like this sweet. Th th this is such cheesy, ah. like pulpy stuff that you came up with for those two. And I'm so down for it like i'm just so here for those two. Oh my gosh I really, those like, crazy kids please everyone send us your fan fiction <laughs> of our sweet competitive wizard we children we will also accept so character good. sketches <laughs> <laughs> yes my dms are open or an 800 page novel yeah. <laughs> about it if you feel so inspired mm. um uh, so I like I mean, how do you think your your magical girl thing? Does somebody knock over the tower, or are they like strong enough to? I mean, we. So I have I have only had one game in in like two years of playtesting. I've only seen one game where they were at they were in scene eight, and the follow said, "You know what? I think I want to end the scene here. I think I, I want to Ooh. end the scene without us." And 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 that means like the characters never act on their feelings. Mm -hmm. It's super rare. Um, but it does happen. It's it's totally mechanically allowed, and you can play towards it if you really want. And that was this beautiful game where, like, one of them was from the moon, and one of them was from Earth, and the moon was like, uh, it, there was this war of independence going on, mm. like a civil war where the moon was trying to become its own. Like, anyway, it's kind of Ursula K. Le Guin, sort of the dispossessed fan fiction. <laughs> so, 
they but they were on opposite sides um but they really loved each other so they um yeah, they, they decided that, you know, the war was over and they went their separate ways and it was touching and beautiful, but that's actually very rare. So I definitely think there's a possibility that Zena and Gabrielle would get there because this is like world ending stuff, you know? Yeah, that's true. <sighs> I don't know. No, you know what? I'm calling it. Yep, please. I think. Okay. I think it's, it's, a, I think that they eventually just like break down and express their love for each other. And then it's like, this was the real miracle romance all along. Ooh. You know, because like magical girl stories is so much about like trusting your feelings and like learning to like trust in each other. You guys and, should like, see the happy <laughs> clap that Ryan just did. It was adorable. <laughs> like it's just, it would be so cheesy and it would be so like final episode yes. negating a bunch of like stuff perfect. that had happened earlier in this really like not earned way. And that is uh, perfect yes I, I want it to be like mm-hmm. you know the our two animal companions turn into their human forms and they were like all you needed was to learn to believe in yourself and like you know the feelings that you had were real and important mm-hmm. and it's okay to feel that way it would be this like yeah queer coming of age like inspiring yes. girl thing I and, love and the whole series this tuxedo mask type character has just been a red herring to the oh. audience. Like, of course he's that's the so prince good. that she's supposed to be betrothed to. No. <laughs> that's Right, awesome. and you could tell that he was wrong for her all along. Exactly. <sighs> you guys, and so be, And she did what she believed like and what was true and integral and not what other people expected of her, not what society said she had to do. That is, that is a magical That was the real story. magic. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's amazing. I need a moment. <sighs> You guys, it makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like if anybody made it to the end without acting on it, it would probably be our spies, though. Because I feel like... That would be nice. They've got the training. Yeah, yeah. Got oh, the, yeah. The wherewithal and the, like... They put, their, they put their feelings aside all the time. Oh, totally. And, and, uh, and they're just, like, cool about it, mm-hmm. you know? And maybe there's some mm-hmm. little, like, flirtatious thing where they're both, like, acknowledging it a little bit, but never ever ever acting on it and so it's just this like you know oh yeah it's you i missed mm-hmm. you in panama you know <laughs> i think there's like always this hope that like they're gonna have to like go undercover to like oh, yeah. infiltrate the other one <laughs> <laughs> and like that they're gonna have to like pretend to be a couple but like not really pretending <laughs> yeah or like they get trapped in some situation definitely and they have to work together and like god pretend married is like that's a stupid trope and i really like it a lot it's so good it's very good I'm for it. <laughs> and and that would be great because then they could just be like constantly sniping at each other mm-hmm. but then they still have to like pretend to be nice to each other when they're around other people and uh you know rent one hotel room and everything uh, <laughs> you know <Yes. laughs> oh my gosh this is mm-hmm. so but yeah the idea of that being the pair that never acts on it is like really good and i i noticed in our um character creation we had the most like you know really kind of cool sultry enticing buildup that then was re- like really sad at the end so i think that the idea <laughs> yeah. of the actual play like reflecting that is really cool mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah oh gosh it was so good <laughs> <laughs> okay so one of our big questions is always how does this game handle character development? Not necessarily advancement, but like as you're playing, mm. how does your character grow as a person? Is that something that like you thought a lot about or just because it's like a very kind of a short window of time that you felt like this was sort of an encapsulation of who they are at this particular time? Um, how do you uh, how do you feel about that? I think it again has to do with making sure that there are a lot of unanswered questions at the start. Um, when there are questions, people want to answer them. And when you play, you kind of have to necessarily figure out, um, what those answers are. And that's also part of why, uh, that's the questions about like, what are their attractive features are important. Um, I mean, from the other person, right? Uh, what, what about them? Do they not realize as attractive uh, is important because like I said, part of playing out this character is deciding whether you're going to live up to that perception or not right whether you're going to and maybe you disappoint the other person by not living up to it or maybe you 
sort of exceed their expectations or you show this side of them that they didn't see. Like one of the moves is reveal something personal and you can play to what's on your sheet or you can play kind of against it in Mm -hmm. an interesting way, right? So like, oh yeah, no, I'm cool and confident, but there's this one thing that I'm like super insecure about and and that is kind of interesting. Or, you know, I, I, I play really stuffy and uptight, but there's this one thing that, you know, I, I, I can't resist dancing. So when, whenever <laughs> there's music that's good to dance to, I can't resist it. Um, so it, it gives you a lot to, uh, to play with and against. So by having as many open questions as possible, that is how characters develop, right? Is by spending enough time together with another person um, revealing things about themselves constantly and putting themselves in these vulnerable positions over and over again, Mm -hmm. uh, you inevitably see something about them. And, and I think that that's character development, uh, whether they're changing or whether we as the sort of audience slash director slash actor, you know, (laughs) that is being a player, uh, just see different sides of them. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's the version of character development in Starcrossed. Yeah, you definitely know a lot more about them at the end, even if they aren't necessarily changed as a person overall. Um, although I, I feel like you would be at least slightly changed based on, you know, whether you do or don't act mm-hmm. on things. Yeah. But um, yeah, what we know about these characters is definitely vastly different yeah. over the course of play. And I think I think just they, because you've they had do end out. up changing, right? Just because of the situations that they're in. And, you know, when we imagine different endings for our characters... You know, like that Sailor Xena at the end of that series is going to be very different than Sailor Xena at the start of it, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. uh, and I feel like those spies, in order to get be in those situations, they're going to have to adapt and figure things out about themselves. And and those two crazy kids at wizard school, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, if just in the act of acting on their feelings, because it's something that they've resisted, something about them changes, right? There, there's mm-hmm. some internal change mm-hmm. that says okay, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. All right. So normally at this point, we talk about character advancement and leveling up, but that doesn't really uh, pertain to this game. So (laughs) we want to talk about something a little bit different here. So we're still going to take it up a level, but not quite in the same way. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. So Alex, characters don't necessarily level up in this game like they do in more of our traditional campaign style games um, because you have eight distinct scenes and you have your jumbling block tower. Um, there's there's a definite end to the game in mind always. Is I feel like it would be really cool to talk about um, growth in a different way though because the, the growth that happens isn't always mechanical, right? We grow as players. Um, there's narrative development. There's even increases in intensity of things. Um, so want to start with intensity and talk about the intensity of the game. Um, in particular, the concept of bleed, which is not something that I think we get to talk about in role-playing games a lot, but I feel like is really, really important when we play the more like dramatic mm-hmm. style games. Um, so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I think, um, so for those not familiar with the concept of bleed, um, that is a term that we use sometimes when we talk about role playing, which is when either feelings that we as a person have uh, bleed into the character, and, you know, we're just, we have this anger maybe, and so we just end up with this really angry character and they're expressing all this anger. Um, And this happens often not intentionally. Uh, and sometimes we uh, experience bleed the other way, which is things are happening to our character, not to us, right? It's all happening fictionally, but we we feel the reaction that our character is having to the situation. Um, so something, so you know, they just did this amazing, cool thing and achieved this amazing goal that they've been working towards for ten sessions, and. Of course, our character would feel amazing about having achieved that, but man, we feel amazing too. Mm-hmm. So that's how bleed works, either in or out. Uh, and it's a term that was coined by Emily Kerboss, but it is, it, it, it is such a part of the lexicon now. Um, and it was expanded upon greatly by Dr. Sarah Lynn Bowman and, uh, and by pretty much every role-playing scholar. I mean, you can't talk about role-playing without talking about bleed. So this is a game that is 
designed to make it happen. This is a game that is designed to induce bleed, um, which is why I thought I'd uh, not only be considerate with something like the X card, but I, I don't think just including an X card would be enough. I think it would be unethical for me to design a game that is designed to get your feelings out and onto your character and to get the character's feelings out and into you um, without writing the whole game as a, an act of care. Mm-hmm. So it, it was super, super important to me every time I drafted a new version of the rules to make sure that what I'm telling people is to care about themselves and each other and to check in and be like, hey, is this are, are these fun feelings that I'm feeling that I, I'm super into or are these like bad feelings I don't want to be feeling? Because um, this game can make you uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but like discomfort can be fun. Like, you know, kind of a little like squirming in your seat. I mean, there's a reason why people go to see horror movies or they go to see, you know, real like nail biting thrillers or whatever. But that's some discomfort, but it's a discomfort that you want to feel. Um, right. You've chosen to mm-hmm. opt in. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and it can be an exciting, uh, <laughs> you know, not knowing what's going to happen kind of fun discomfort. But in this game, what is important to me is that you are feeling feelings you are excited to feel. <laughs> so I don't know how to end that sentence. Like, that's just like, <laughs> it's <laughs> end of sentence. Like, uh, so, feel, like yeah. be what you are, uh, do what you are jazzed to be doing. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking for that enthusiastic consent. And there's a number of uh, instructions in the rules that tell you to check in with each other and make sure that everyone's enthusiastically into what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of funny that, you know, this is this is a game about romance, and I feel a really strong need to include rules like that and and uh, text like that. When really, I, I think playing any game, you can experience bleed, and even in the most like lighthearted, you know, sort of whatever game, I'm not going to feel any feelings about this. You never know what can come up, right? I mean, we're we're all role playing and we're all coming up with stuff together. You have no idea, right? You get scared by the silliest things, or you. Uh, you get upset by the by the smallest things or things that other people would consider small. You're like, no, that's a big deal because of stuff that happened in my life, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I think when you play with with other people, you should care about them. And I think you have a responsibility to, to take care of yourself first, too. So how long before we see the first star-crossed actual romances stemming from playing this game? <laughs> So, yes. Uh, funny thing about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's already happened. Oh, <laughs> nice. I, I mean, I don't want to take too much responsibility. You should, though. I can't say that I caused it by having people play this game. I just know that whether or not there's a causation, there has been some correlation with people playing this game and then later um, being very close with each other. <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. Um, but but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes people just end with a handshake, and that's cool too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, so that's some like very that's some very real mm-hmm. right there. I met, right, I met my wife be... at a convention playing Starcross. Oh my gosh, that's the dream. <laughs> when someone sends me their wedding photos, I'm and with a, a oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, how do you how do you kind of deal with that i mean because bleed can be totally positive emotions and that's really great Mm -hmm. like you get to walk away with like these really good feelings of like you know like look we made love happen (laughs) um but but sometimes it's it's not like sometimes you like stories are really sad or um you know you walk away feeling like things are unresolved how do you kind of manage that um like sitting down at the you know like at the end everything's over like what do you do to say like okay now i have to go home (laughs) well so i'll give you a little design secret wink wink um part of the way that i stop that from happening uh is via the scene structure so rather than having one open-ended thing that lasts two hours um roughly i have eight scenes meaning that you have an alibi, you have a a sort of mechanical reason to stop and pause and be like, how is this going? And there are no instructions in the rules that say between scenes, have a discussion that looks exactly like this. Uh, It is just, it it just seems to happen based on my playtests that I've observed Mm -hmm. and and been in. 
that at the end of each scene, people just do this like, okay, cool, great. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. now now what? And how, how okay, woof, was that, that was pretty cool. Um, and there's, there's some expressions back and forth about how each other are feeling about it. Um, and if you're not feeling great about the game, I, I, one thing I do specify in the rules is that if you're not feeling great about it, end the game. Either knock over the tower or just be like, well, you know, I'm kind of done. Let's, let's end it here. Let's wrap it up. Uh, that's a power that you have. And I don't know if people would necessarily find that easy to do if I didn't have these little sort of mandated breaks, uh, like approximately eight of them. So yeah. <laughs> so part of the scene structure is giving those little kind of release valves and also giving you these uh, very easy opportunities to say, hey, our game's kind of going in this direction. Can we make the next scene like maybe a little more fun and cute? Mm -hmm. um, or, hey, our game's going in this direction. Can we like play even harder to like how steamy it is and how like cool and sexy it is uh you know or or whatever the tone is or whatever the themes are that are coming up um you really have an opportunity to calibrate not just during right because you have a turn structure and you're going back and forth and deciding what happens uh but but there's these little breaks too yeah and you find that people are like in your play testing that people are kind of utilizing them for that purpose every single to kind time of, like, consistently check in every single time and That's it's just cool. oh my gosh i feel like a wizard i love it <laughs> is that i was gonna say is that a moment of like <laughs> yeah totally yeah i'm like i'm power. Like, like a super villain except people are just being nice to you each don't other. even know what i've done it's <laughs> <laughs> my version of like a, a like trolling or like practical joking it's just yeah setting up these opportunities for people to be kind and care <laughs> how are your feelings the best kind of trolling <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we can learn a lot as players by playing these kind of games. Are there specific things that you hope people will learn from a game like this? And are there things that you have learned while playtesting this game? Thank you so much for asking this question. It is a very good question. Um, uh, humans learn things constantly. They are constantly learning. They will never stop. You can try really, really, really hard. Um, but humans are pretty determined to learn stuff and whether or not you want your game to teach things your your game is saying stuff and your game is reinforcing certain behaviors and not giving opportunities for other behaviors so i've tried to be as intentional as possible in what i want people to learn from this game while also you know being subtle about it but my game contains lots of instructions on how to say what you want and how to say what you like, and how to say, I don't like that, let's take that in a different direction. Um, how to say all ki different kinds of yeses and all different kinds of noes, and to have those, all, all the yeses and all the noes be valuable and kind and uh, expressions of compassion and care. And in other words, I, I want to teach people how to do like totally consent-based negotiations of intimacy of creative intimacy mm -hmm. and i i hope i've done a good job of that um i i don't know how much i do that or to what extent but that's a really really strong design goal that i discovered about halfway through making the game that i was starting to do that a little bit and suddenly it became really really important to me um so if anyone learns that from playing this game or if they become slightly more skilled at it or if it just comes slightly more naturally to them or if or if it's just a good opportunity to practice those skills that we all use um that would like really warm my heart and make me really really happy <laughs> it, i mean that's a thing that i i noticed reading the rules is that it's a really good um it's a really good rundown of how to communicate in a complicated situation where you have a lot of emotions and a lot of things going on. Um, it's a good a good guide for how to have those kinds of conversations in like sort of small snippets in ways that you like would get to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I this is probably like not really for the podcast, but like I think a lot about how to have those discussions about consent um, 
because I have kids <laughs> and like there's still very little. So like we're not at the point where we need to have those discussions. But I think about it when I tell my daughter things like, please stop touching my face all the time. Mm-hmm. She's this thing where she like has to do this. <laughs> and it's like, you, you don't touch people. <laughs> like just don't. So like I'm always like in the back of my mind mm-hmm. thinking about how to have those kinds of conversations and how to teach you know, like particularly in this case, little kids, yeah. but even like grown ups need to learn too, yep. um, how to have these kinds of difficult discussions that are sometimes mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Yeah. And there is the chance that like the other person isn't necessarily going to like what you have to say or you're not going to be on the same page. Yeah. Um, but you have to have those conversations anyway because they're important. And so I, I think that this game, like aside from all of the fun that we had um, making these characters and telling really cool stories, like there's the opportunity to really um to really sit down and practice having those kinds of difficult conversations in an environment that's really low stakes. Thank you so much for recognizing that. Um that uh that makes me happy that that it comes through. And I think you know talking with kids is a great example of like how how do I talk about hey here's how you should interact with people when you're close with them, right? And how do I teach like asking up front, right? Like, hey, can I do this? And how to respond when someone says no, right? Like how to resist the urge to be like, oh, well, are you sure? Like how to take no graciously to accept no as a gift, right? Like I, th- I think really strongly in this game, no is such an important thing to tell your partner and it leads to a better game, mm-hmm. right? If you go along with mm-hmm. something that you're not really excited about, Right. If you say, "Oh, well, okay, yeah, no, I, I guess your character can be that." Like, yeah. Well, that's that's not my preference, but go for it. Like, that game's not going to be as good than if you had said, "No, I'm just really not excited about that." Let Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can come up with something that's even cooler that we're both really um, into. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to have a better game if you say no when you want to say no, and and if you say yes when you want to say yes, and if you have the courage to say. I am into this, right? If you have the courage to be like, I just want to be magical girls. Can we please be magical girls? Uh, then yeah. whether or not your partner says yes to that, you're making the game better by being honest and putting yourself out there and saying, this is what I like. And I think learning to navigate having those conversations when there are really strong emotions attached mm. to is really important because I think you can have lots of discussions about like it's okay to say no when you don't like something and that's one thing to say like <laughs> no thank you I don't want to eat these peas that you gave me for dinner <laughs> but it's another thing to say no like you are my friend and I don't want to ruin that yeah. like those are very different kinds of no yep. and to sort of learn how to navigate it when you have those really strong feelings that are telling you something different from what you logically know that you need to do. Yes. And to say no when there's a lot of pressure to say yes, right? Like I think there is a lot of pressure to say yes in a co-creative game because people sometimes get the impression that saying yes to everything is the way that you make a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> when in fact saying yes is awesome and saying no for no reason, uh, you know, or or not realizing that you're saying no uh, can not always be the right choice, but saying no when uh, it seems like they're going to be really happy if I say yes, so maybe I should say yes. Mm-hmm. Like that is a skill that I want people to practice, you know, and I want people to practice saying yes when when it's something that they really like, and maybe it's when it's something they're really embarrassed about because people like really um, people like really kind of cheesy stories and stuff, and sometimes mm-hmm. maybe they have a little hesitation to bring that out. And, and mm-hmm. honestly, like, I, I think most people have some inhibition talking about what they like when, when it's a, a romantic and possibly sexual game, right? Like, things can get really, like, intimate mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, the stories and the scenes can be about people being very, very close to each other. And just saying, like, you know, I, I want your character to be really tall. I'm going to say that your character is really tall. I'm revealing something about myself when I say that, you know? Um, and regardless of what it is, even if it's the most mundane thing, like being tall, uh, sometimes people, uh, you, you know, they, it, that's hard to say. And if I can give people an opportunity to practice saying that, I like this, um, and to put that out there without the expectation that it is a demand or that your, your partner has to respond in a certain way to it, to just put it out there as a, as a gift. Um, yeah, I think 
that, again, it would just make me really happy if people did that as a result of playing my, <laughs> my silly fun game. I'm a huge fan of like w- what you can learn from role playing, like about yourself and how you interact with other people. Oh, yeah. And like, I mean, there's just, there's so many things um, that you can, you can sort of teach in a way that it doesn't feel like teaching. Or like I said, that you can learn these lessons in a low stakes environment yeah. that like you can play it out and see what happens when there are, you know, when the consequences are sort of confined to the table, yeah. there's, it, you have a lot more opportunities to explore things that you, you don't want to learn mm-hmm. the hard way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. And, you know, feelings come up in this game, but for the most part, it is usually very light and, and often very silly. And that's such a great opportunity to have this like totally low stakes practice, right? It's practice, practice, practice of, I like this. I don't like that. I'm excited about this. I'm not excited about that. Um, This is really valuable to me. This is really important to me. And this isn't, uh, that's really upsetting to me. Like all those things are just, let's practice saying those things when they're true uh, about ourselves. And, and as, as you two noticed, when we started putting characters together and started putting, uh, particularly in that sort of when we're answering questions about the other character and what's attractive about them and when we get down to why is that important to me like a piece of yourself does come in to to this game and 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 you really do kind of bleed in a little bit to your character Mm -hmm. and that i think that makes it a more valuable practice like that that makes it a more valuable learning experience because it feels a little bit closer to home without feeling you know like a real intimacy negotiation Mm -hmm. thing right yeah I mean, I don't know about you, but all of my romantic encounters have involved uh, brick towers. So. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are doing. First date, got to bust out the tower and see what's up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see how it goes, you know? That's how we know whether it's real or not. Yeah. <laughs> Is this going to work? No, you knocked over the and, tower. <laughs> and thank you for including the second part of that question. Are there things that you have learned while playtesting this game? Because, yes, because I would not have even realized that this you know that in its early form that this game was about that if i hadn't play tested it and seen people starting to have these discussions that included stuff like i'm really excited about that and i like that and can we have more of this and i was like oh wow if people are going to have discussions like that i need to write a game that honors that process and that helps it happen in a in a healthy and and caring way i love that like that's such a cool part of of game design that i think that like doesn't get highlighted very often is how you after playtesting, you can go through sometimes and like really emphasize the things that are working well too yeah. on top of, you know, like you spend a lot of time cutting things that or reworking things that aren't going well, but you can spend time to um, highlighting and emphasizing the things that are working well and kind of make oh, yeah. sure that those things shine. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for pointing that out. Like I... I really hope that people don't think of playtesting as like, you're going to put your game on the chopping block and people are going to tear it apart and, you know, you're going to see all the the bad stuff and have to go back and do a bunch of work to fix it. Because very often you will, people will bring you gems, you know, people will say, hey, wow, did you, do you realize that your, your game did this? Or, you know, I had this experience as a result of your game or this part, you know, really emphasize this part and, and bring it to the forefront because it's, that's where the fun is. Uh, you know, those are things you only find out through uh, playtesting, and and it's really a joy when you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing. Like, I would really love to. I'd love to be like sitting there and listening to those conversations as people are like, "Oh, yeah, you can." You know, I did this, and you have those moment of like, "Oh, oh, I didn't even know that it <laughs> it could do that," <laughs> or like that that's a direction that people would want to take it, yeah. and like that like light bulb of like, "Oh, this is like even better than what I had originally thought it would be." Well, I will tell you when I encountered people playing out that um alien brain parasite and human host scenario, I was I was amazed. You never dreamed of that? I, I that was not <laughs> one that I included in the sort of samples um <laughs> examples of play. Um I have been I have been honored to witness the incredible creativity of of the human brain. Um, <laughs> human heart parasite or no <laughs> yeah w- when it's infected by an alien parasite <laughs> called love oh this metaphor is going wildly oh, yes. <laughs> um I, I mean i think that we kind of talked a little bit about this already in in just the the, the wide swath of topics that we've we've covered with this game but do you have any particular advice that you would want to give people to get the most out of this kind of game? 
say what you like. Just put it out there. It's not scary. It's not bad. You know, if you like, if you, if you love Xena, love Xena, <laughs> just put it out there. Um, and if you want, actually want to play like just super normal two people who, you know, whatever they work together, they don't want to have a weird workplace thing. That's a perfectly good game. If you really love just being in space and you want to set your game in space, put it out there. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, when you offer it, you are just that that's the only way to make the game great is is to just just say it. Hey, I like this. And maybe your partner will say no, and then you'll know. You'll know that that's not something they're interested in. But even in their no, there will be something that you'll want to play with that will come out of it. You're, you're going to just have, you will have the best time if you are open and honest and forward about those things. Yeah, exactly. Like everyone, it will be better for everyone <laughs> yes. if you say what you want. Yep. Do you have um, a reason why people who don't normally like this kind of game might want to give it a try? Well, I don't want to, I don't want to. Because not everything is not for everything everyone, is for like I said before. And if you are 100% but, sure that like, you are just not interested in these kinds of stories, then that's cool. But if you don't want to play because you think it's only for couples or something, uh, that is definitely not true because I have play tested this with a lot of strangers. <laughs> um, <laughs> people who are strangers to each other have play tested this at cons. Um, and they have a really good time. In fact, it's a hell of a way to get to know somebody. Uh, it's, it's super, super fun. Um, if you are not sure, like, uh, the other really cool thing about playtesting is that it was very important to me that I get this in front of people who identify as asexual or aromantic. And I have had the opportunity mm -hmm. to do that. And I was like, is there anything in here for you? Like, is this interesting to you at all? And like, obviously not all aro people, not all ace people, but the response that I had from, uh, I had a really, really good discussion with uh, an aromantic identified person after having played this game. And basically their response, if I may sum it up, was, uh, you know, I have no interest in this for myself. It's not something that appeals to me in, in my personal life, but I can ship with the best of them. And I ship those two so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, because you don't um, identify in those ways personally doesn't mean that you can't enjoy telling those kinds mm -hmm. of stories. Because yeah. I think that, you know, I mean, we all play all kinds of weird role playing games. Mm -hmm. And like, I do not identify as, you know, like a straight man, but I can play that at a table. Like, there's nothing that says that that's, mm -hmm. you know, my character can't be that. And so when you're suspending that amount of disbelief of, you know, a, a brain eating parasite like there's nothing that says that you can't also tell yeah. those kinds of stories and if if you're just incidentally someone who is like sick of the dominant culture telling you it's really important and so you don't want to engage with those stories 100 percent respect um but it is something that i have re tried really hard to like make sure that it's open to those folks so if uh, if you are one of those folks and uh it goes well for you i'm really happy and that means i've met my goal in fact if it doesn't go well for you like hit me up and please let me know if that if you're comfortable with that because I'll, I'll want to know and how I can improve. Um, yeah, so I honestly, if it seems like the kind of game that you would never play, that's cool. But like, you know, my DMs are open if you want to like talk it through and maybe it really is because I believe in you. I believe that um, that there is something about these kinds of stories. There is some relationship that is one way that could be another way. Like, as long as there's a story like that that interests you, you can tell it with this game. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at I'll leave I it there. To use, like, I have to like sound like my mom here and be like, how do you know you don't like it if you haven't tried it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as green beans, guys. Just mm -hmm. give it a try. <laughs> Maybe it's not so bad. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, Alex, thank you so much for sitting down with us to talk about Starcrossed. Can you remind everyone at home where they can find you and this wonderful game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you can go to helloalexroberts.com and find out about me. You can go to bullypulpitgames.com and find out more about Starcrossed. Uh, but if you're listening to this around the time it came out, you can probably still catch it on Kickstarter. 
So uh, go to kickstarter.com and search for Starcrossed and you'll find it there and you can even back it if you feel like it. Toss a little support my way. I think you will find that um, it makes you very happy. It will definitely make me very happy. (laughs) (laughs) It'll make us happy too. And, you know, it sounds like it's going to have great art and everything too oh, so that's right you know, oh my gosh else, buy it to look the art at it i just think oh i literally just Ugh. i looked at sketches yesterday and i was like this is the greatest this is the best best fit just, best fit of all time it's so good <laughs> um oh yeah and if you want to contact me personally um the best way is probably twitter uh you can find my email on my website but i'm also at muscular pikachu on twitter and i talk about the game a lot on there uh, so if you want to find out more that's a good way to get a hold of me well, thank you so much alex um for everybody listening we will make sure we put a link to the kickstarter in the show notes um for everybody and so thank you again so much so so much for taking the time to sit down with us and make these really amazing characters and to talk us through your process i really really appreciate well, it thank you so much for um for being open and giving this a try and doing something that sounds like it's a little bit different um that's i'm really uh i'm really touched by that thank you and everybody listening thank you so much for joining us we will be back again soon Character Creation Cast is an independent production and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the game systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. I'm glad Ryan puts up with me because he was like, why do this podcast with me? And I was like, here's three spreadsheets in a Google form. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Give me a second. I'm realizing I'm tired. You can cut that out. (laughs) Got Um, like a little bit of that, like leftover nap cobwebs. (laughs) I think so. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's pretty fun. See, mashing up rules. Exactly. It's it's good. Rules and genres mashed together are always like. Yeah. The best results. Yeah, it seems, seems to be a take uh, these two a things that I love and put them together. <laughs> <laughs> even better. You Give me that Reese's cup, cup, please. <laughs> yes, it's the Reese's of game design. <laughs> exactly. All right. Anything else that you want to add before we dive in? Oh gosh, no. I have talked about my own <laughs> game far, far too much already. <laughs> cool. So let's talk about your game some more. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, why don't I guide yes. Amelia, you and Ryan, Ryan, you and Amelia. Yes. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I'm officiating a wedding. I'm sorry. This is really <laughs> no. intense. <laughs> Give me one second. Edit mm-hmm. this out so I can go to the right part of the document. <laughs> and now we mash them two together. <laughs> right. Yes. The vampire and the baby face. <laughs> play that i think that'd be an interesting yeah why not? Story. wrestling vampires that sounds good mm-hmm. whoa um 
Yeah, I know. Sorry, that sorry, that was just that just hit me with how good it was. But uh, <laughs> let's focus back yeah. on wizard school. So. <laughs> Gryffindor, like, I feel like their house motto is, I'm the protagonist. Uh. <laughs> I've sorted my children into houses, too, though. So, well, you that's know. like, you know, a core part of their identity, too. Like, my son <laughs> is definitely a Hufflepuff. He's sweet. And my daughter is a Slytherin. She's, <laughs> she'll Complex. do what it takes, man. Complex she'll do what family. it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I spelled that right on my first try, but kudos nice <laughs> i just write an incomprehensible cursive so that like you can't tell whether i did or didn't this is why i tape nice yeah oh sweet that means i have time to go uh put more water in my tea i'll be right back more tea. <laughs> i'll sit here and do stuff <laughs> in my closet here. So I move my table. Ooh. Part of a pirate costume. <laughs> okay. Xena and Gabrielle, magical girls. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> Call us Netflix. Oh my god. <laughs> I just keep picturing Lucy Lawless. <laughs> <laughs> Same, but every day. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is having fun now. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay. Ryan, do you have I one do. more sheet? Um, Done? Okay. I'm going to I don't I'm going to, to do it. any work. Uh, there you go. All right. Now I get to spy. Facilitate. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, that's what I meant. Facilitate. <laughs> right. <laughs> For everybody that can't see, Alex is like wiggling oh, her yeah, eyebrow. Oh, yeah, sorry. Now, the like... eyebrow doesn't really come through yeah. in the audio, but uh, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I'll fix it in post. It. It's like very, she has this very mischievous look on her face. <laughs> Insert eyebrow wiggles here. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yes. All right. You can edit this out later, but I want to say that I really liked how you said that, like a radio host. I, it really <laughs> gave me this kind of like NPR good stuff. Good yes, stuff. it was really good. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel like we keep saying that over and over in this episode of like, this isn't how we normally do it, but <laughs> like normally, like we've done this a hundred times. I'm and, shaking like, it totally up. Breaking things. <laughs> so <laughs> it didn't apply. Okay. <laughs> that was like an extreme amount of fun is the thing.